Previously on Drake Paragon. One giant X. <laughs> Is that a steamer? It's a boat. Hell no, not us. That's what she looked like when I pulled the deck off. And then we had a child. Making me rabbit. Frame tent. And then a second child. It's learning how to deal with a big project. The bracket that bolts here. And then we bought a house. Wooden runner. It's still got the bark on it. Those are lead. And then you come along and drive it. The secret ingredient is water. Wow, oh, look how thick that is. How thick is that? Oh my god, when I saw her last time, she didn't have a deck, did she? She had no. a deck, but no cabin top. That's right, she that's right. She had a deck, but no cabin top? Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh my god, she is just breathtakingly beautiful. She is truly gorgeous. So beautiful. That's okay. So this is canvas. I've never canvas, seen this so that's before. that's brand new. Traditionally, you would put this canvas over a white lead paste. Obviously, I don't want to use lead paste underneath my canvas mm -hmm. for kids. Mm -hmm. So I researched this uh, other method of using this rubbery paint called Volchem. Mm -hmm. It's from Boston. The oh. distributor that I went to was in Boston. And I got a five-gallon pail, and I got a friend, and he and I just laid this stuff on really, really thick on the, on the tongue and groove uh, wana that the cabin top's made out of, and then we stretched this canvas over it, stapled it all around the edge, saturated it with water and bore solution to keep fungus and mold away, let that shrink and dry, and it really shrunk to the point where if you came over here, this opening and tapped it, it was like a drum. Once it dried, I came back with a thinned coat of more of that Volchem and I painted over that. And it will get one more coat of just normal oil paint thinned out to make a just a uniform color that we like. And then I have these handrails that I made, these grab rails oh, yeah. that get uh, bolted on. Did you make the handrail? Made it. It's beautiful. Wow. They're 18 feet long. <laughs> They're really long. 18 yep. feet. <laughs> and, they, and they sit right about. Here. They come in through here like this, so there's enough room for for like friends to sit along the cabin. Oh yeah, side. right alongside here. Yeah. And it will go the whole length of the cabin top. It'll go the whole length of the cabin top. Yep. It'll be a foot well in that cockpit. It'll area. be a foot foot well right there. Yep. Ah. And then we'll build just these. Bud Macintosh type sliding hatch like this. Oh yeah. Uh, a turtle or a scabbard, I think uh -huh. they call it. Yeah, yeah. So what do you think of the bow? Do you like it, Frida? You like it? Wow. I think she's so beautiful. Oh, and you've got a bulwark with drainage. Yep. Nice drainage. This I designed. This was not part of the original boat. Really? You made this bulwark? Yep. Is it It's solid? Solid. Solid wood. And then I made these sort of chocks, these kind of integrated chocks in the rail mm -hmm. cap. Oh, yeah. Yep. And I hope they work. <laughs> <laughs> That's your own design, huh? Is that bronze? It's naval brass. Naval brass. And did you bend it to fit that I shape? I did. I had to bend each one individually and screw it down. To, it's just chafe gear, really. Yep. And what's this called? Bit A bit post. And you've got one on the stern. Yeah. I have one on the stern and one on the bow. There's the equivalent of a bow spread that comes out here. It's called a boomkin. A boomkin. And the uh, Backstay goes from a sort of a chain plate down at the stem over the and attaches to the boom can and then the 
back state comes down and attaches to that, so it's, it, it allows a larger mainsail. And she's got two masts, right? It's two masts, schooner rig, yeah. Schooner rig. So I'll put a butterfly hatch in the middle of the cabin top. That'll be beautiful. Just ahead of that, I hope to build uh, brackets to hold this nester dinghy. It's an 11 foot dinghy that fastens together in the middle. So when, when you're taking off to go somewhere, you, you detach the center bronze hardware and take the two halves apart and nest them. Wow. And put them upside down on the deck. Are you going to make that? I'm going to make it. Yeah. Wow. You can get the plans. And I, I've always had it in my head that that was what we would use. And it will be stored forward of the butterfly hatch? Forward of the butterfly hatch, yeah. And then this would just be a hatch similar to the top of Valley and it lifts forward. It'd be a huge wind scoop. Huge wind you know. scoop, yep. Yeah. And the foremast. Foremast goes there. Goes there. Wow, look how thick that is. How thick is that? Thick. It's like oh my uh, God. two inches of framing and an inch and a quarter planking. So the, all this <laughs> this whole deck is inch and a quarter thick wanna. Inch and a quarter thick. Wana from uh, South America. The hull is wana, deck is wana, the cabin sides and the cabin top are wana, and the framing is all white oak and locust. I, Sorry, I have to put up on this, it feels so good. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's like it has good traction, it has a nice organic feel. It's starting to stink less like uh, rubber chemicals. I like this. <laughs> will you paint it? I will. We have a color that's uh, kind of an uh, an ivory color. An ivory the whole color will be like if I ordered a gallon of paint, which is like ivory watered down. It's a tap strength ivory yep. paint. Mm -hmm. And then the sails are all red, dark red. And then this is an ivory color. Then there's trim and stuff that comes around to cover this canvas yep. edge. Mandy likes to pick colors so she can get all crazy with the uh, trim color. Saffron, mango, like like a goldish, a cheerful gold color with the red sails and the ivory sides. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen canvas used to cover a cabin top. Yeah. yeah really great non -skin. That's what Josh yeah. needs to write an article for wooden boat about this. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, it's not so new. This is well for the bulkhead part. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. But the, traditionally, that's what you. If it's tongue and groove, you put canvas. I really love the bulwarks and your design for the dock lines. Okay. And the bit is beautiful. What's a bit made of? Black locust. Black locust. Mm -hmm. And does that go way down to the hull? Yeah, you can probably see it through here. It's stepped into the keel. Yeah. So you had to be towed or you had to tow somebody else. The strongest thing on the boat, probably, yeah? Mm hmm. Wow. And it's all wedged. It's wedged below the deck, it's, it's wedged at the deck. Yep. To keep water out. It'll get copper nailed around the top with bedding compound underneath. So keep the, to keep the end grain, the end grain. exposed. Uh, yeah, I see these little cracks there. Yeah. Those are minor checks. You're going to see them in every sizable timber in a traditional boat. Yeah. And the bowsprit will... Oh, oh yeah. The, uh, It'll yeah. just sit right in that little space. Yeah. It's about four inches in diameter, and, it, and it, it's, it's, it's got a lot of shape to it, a lot of different shape. Mm -hmm. It's flat on the top, and then there's a gammon iron that comes around with some anchor rollers in it. Wow. That's original, actually, from like 80 years ago when she was built. I'm going to have it regalvanized and put it on there. Oh, yeah. She's just magnificent. I feel like I'm on a piece of art and in another time. Mm -hmm. you know, she's not like a, like boats are made today. Yeah, it's very much a, a kerosene lantern, yeah. wood fire, um, read, reading at night by a lantern type experience. <laughs> <laughs> When we have instrumentation, I want to have like a, a depth sounder, maybe a handheld GPS, a, maybe a chart plotter, and that's mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. it. Like, I don't want to get all crazy. I just want to get out there on the water and... Dance parties. No strobe lights for yeah. dance parties. <laughs> all right, all right. You got to go with the group, with the, with the group wants. And they want dance Ooh. parties. <laughs> But simple, 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 simple. Simple dance parties. All. I want, oh, no, dance parties to be all crazy. But the boating part, I want the boating to be just simple. Yeah. Simple yeah. as you can get. Yeah. Simple as your style. Simple is a way simple to keep elegant. it safe. My, my biggest thing is I want everybody to go out and, and experience and do whatever we want to do, but I want everybody to be just absolutely safe all the time yeah. except when the kids are hanging from the rigging and the swing out over right. the water then I don't want them yeah. to be safe <laughs> yeah I, I, I read that <laughs> that's right they can only land in the water so Einstein said that things are best kept as simple as possible mm. uh, and not simpler than that <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, so you'll have an opening port there? Yeah. I think. You have a rectangular port that fits right in that hole. It's all round ports along the sides. Oh, they're, yeah. they're original. Will they be opening? Mm hmm. Wow. Bronze. Yep. One or two of them have a crack in them, but it's like 3 8 inch glass mm -hmm. held in by this ring, and the ring is 80 years old, so you will never open that ring and replace that glass so it's just going to have a crack in it mm -hmm. does it crack it leaks or no no this is just it's a tight crack <laughs> wow can we take a peek down below? yeah yeah let's go down below hi enter through the top yeah. yeah wow these round ports are gonna be beautiful mm -hmm. Why is a board there over the footwell? The board is there because, oh. for the meantime, that's what you have. Wow. Um, you can see the bulkhead that defines the head to starboard, and then there's... That's the, the head area. Yeah. yeah. Wow. The time that motor was all freshly painted. And yeah. That needs hoses and everything before we get going. It's so beautiful, it's all bright, shiny red. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The prop shaft is just a little bit off center. Yeah, you, there's just no practical way to put it through the keel without disrupting a lot of four foot bronze bolts. So, I did the next best thing, which was to put it right alongside the keel. You put it there. Mm -hmm. You placed the engine there. <laughs> yeah, the shaft used to come out of the planking about two feet off center. Two feet off center. <laughs> yeah. And you had to really hold the wheel when you were okay, motoring. Okay, be very careful. Wow. With and did you get to have motor or sail, strombus? Just once. We only had you one opportunity to motor? do that before we bought her. We bought her from Where? a guy, Steve Waldron, who okay. was sick at the time and terminally ill. Let's wait for death. And so he took us out sailing, and yeah. then he got really sick and passed away. Aye, aye. But he found the perfect... But it's cool. Lot, so many people in this town know this boat. He had the and boat so... here for yeah, years. Yeah, here for like 25 years. Yeah, right out years. in Smith Cove, right out the cove right across from our house. It's not going to look like the original Strombus, but still it's the same name and will be... Will be it's pretty damn close. It doesn't have the. Yeah, it doesn't have. It's the not flesh the flesh deck, deck right. but otherwise the lines are yeah. all the same. The framing, the hull framing is completely the same as the original hull framing. The only thing that's changed is the deck by yep. necessity because I had to redesign to have side decks. You said it was flush deck originally. Flush deck, so this cabin side would go all the way out. Over to in line with the way the hull comes up. It was like a ballroom down there. So she actually has less okay. interior space now than she did when you first got her. Yeah. Huh. But I still find her pretty roomy. Yeah. And so does Frida. <laughs> <laughs> be right back. All right. Every single piece of wood on the boat. Wow. 
Cardboard I do. I, I have that video. Sent you the video. Yeah, yeah, you can feel the two <laughs> It was a walkthrough yeah. of the whole boat. Hey Drake, here's a little quickie tour of the mock-up as it looks today on Strombus. I don't know how much time I have, so I'm gonna move along pretty quick. I'm up forward looking aft at the cabin. And you can kind of see the shape of it, despite all the crap I've got on the top to hold things up. But I'm going to go down now, lower myself into the forepeak, and I'm stepping into what will be a forward sleeping compartment, and look back into the forepeak. There'll be a door on that opening there. That's pretty much squared away. And uh, this would be where our double port offside port berth is, just about where yours is. This is the mast right here, the foremast. I'm thinking about a hanging locker in here with a single berth up here where we could sit and read, or if we had a lot of company, Pilar could sleep on that. And then moving into the saloon, you got the table and seating arrangement which is going to have to change a little because I just moved the main mast. This is a pilot berth where Pilar would sleep with curtains that could pull across. Storage underneath that. Uh, hanging locker here. I'm thinking about you know back. Here's the table. Some shelving in here. Maybe the wood stove and a diesel heater on the bulkhead and then here's the main mist and this is the the galley as it stands now but I think that's gonna have to change a little bit and make more space for stuff and this is a little navigation station such as it is and in here is the head let me back up a little Here's the door to the head, companionway ladder. So the toilet itself, the head would go about here with a little fold down sink in this spot. Back in there be our little mini tub with shelves along that side of the hull. And then there would be there's a box over the engine with a bulkhead above it and a door right here to go back into the lazarette. Any other videos of Strombus along the way? No, no. that was made especially for you, mm -hmm. just so you could see what I... Because pictures, you could take pictures of cardboard, yeah. doesn't... Not really, the same at all. No. Where was I when you emailed that video to me? You were in St. Martin. I was. I think so. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, it's come a long way since then.